Okay, folks, <coughs> we're looking at uh, the second video now uh, concerning uh, annihilationism and the doctrine of hell debate. And uh, we did uh, some preliminary thoughts, and those thoughts were important. We have to be discerning. Uh, we have to realize we're to be taught by the Spirit and the Word of God, not by rationalism. We have to be uh, willing to stand up for the truth and the fundamental of hell is being denied and we must stand, make a stand and that evangelical leaders are caving in to the annihilationist and this is a dangerous precedent and we need to make a stand and make sure that we don't get contaminated with this in our lives and in the church. And then we were going to go on to Edward Fudge and I, I, I didn't have my notes on me. So now we're going to look at Edward Fudge. Now, um, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com. Uh, you can look at me at Facebook and Twitter. So in a lecture um, called The Fire That Consumes, which is really an outline of Dr. Fudge, Edward Fudge's book, um, he asked the question about, uh, is it really reasonable that billions of people would be tortured. He then goes on to say in his lecture people like F.F. F. Bruce, John Stott, Philip E. Hughes, Thomas Albright, John McKay, uh, Homer Haley, uh, Clark Pinnock, John Wayne, Richard Balcom, N.T. Wright, uh, these scholars uh, don't believe in hell but believe in annihilationism. So, so he says um, so the first point there in, in his lecture, uh, N.T. Wright is a great scholar, but there are issues with N.T. Wright. N.T. Wright has got new ideas on the on Pauline theology, and is is not. He's a brilliant scholar, but is not reliable on the doctrine of salvation. Richard Bancom is uh, a brilliant scholar and he's written some great work, but he is not orthodox in his doctrine of inerrancy. Clark Pinnock, who he mentions, is um, has gone went into openness of God theology, which is uh, heretical. Um, so, F. F. Bruce, uh, he doesn't provide any evidence about F. F. Bruce. John Stott was tentative towards annihilationism. Uh, Philip E. Hughes was uh, to to annihilationism. Uh, so, basically, a lot of the people that he mentions on here, he, he either doesn't prove that they're annihilationists, he doesn't provide any evidence, just assumes it, like Holmer Haley, I, 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 he needs to provide evidence there about that gentleman. Uh, and these scholars, some of them are not reliable anyway on certain things concerning salvation. Um... Then he goes into the Old Testament, that the Old Testament teaches annihilationism. So he goes into Psalm 37 verse 1. So 37 verse 1. Fret not thyself of evil doers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. And then verse 9. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse 10. For yet a little while the wicked shall be diligently consider, uh, consider the place that it shall not be. So he quotes uh, a number of these passages. So he quotes uh, Psalm 2 verse 9. Uh, Thou shalt break them with a, a rod of iron, shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So it, what he's saying is, look, these scriptures teach annihilationism. People that killed and that's it. They're not going to go and be tortured forever and ever as the traditional view on hell is teaching. So he, 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 he builds up his case and he'll go to Psalm 139 uh, 100, Psalm 139 verse 19 Surely thou will slay the wicked, O God, depart from me therefore you, you bloody men. And he goes on and on and on, and you can look at Psalm 94, verse 23, Psalm 69, verse 28, Psalm 11, verse 6. And he goes on and on, and he provides this wealth of Old Testament material. 
and uh, he, let's go to Genesis chapter. So, and, and then he just doesn't go in the Psalms. He goes all over the Old Testament. So let's go to Genesis seven twenty one. Genesis seven uh, twenty one. It says, All flesh died that moved upon the earth of the fowl, of the cattle, and the beast, and every creeping thing. Genesis 19.24 About Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, then the Lord rained uh, Sodom and, uh, upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire upon the Lord of heaven. And uh, he quotes New Testament passages that mention this, 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 6, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5 and 7, Jude 7. And then he, he looks at more Psalms, Psalm 2, 7 and 9, uh, Break the Wicked, uh, Isaiah 66 verse 24, which is a controversial passage, uh, talks about hell, etc. So we'll stop there at the Old Testament. Now this is uh, an important thing, listen to this please, because this is very important. When you're in a debate with an annihilationist, when you are in dialogue with a, an annihilationist, you will feel totally overwhelmed, because what they do, they will quote loads of scripture, like I've just shown you, loads of Old Testament scripture that will say you have been annihilated, that, it, sorry, that the wicked are destroyed. And if you, as you get all these verses in a debate, it looks as if the annihilationists have got, have got you by the throat. It looks as if, if you're talking to annihilationists on the ground in real life, that they're doing amazingly well because they're providing all these Bible verses and you can't answer them. And it's the tactic of the annihilationist, whenever you're in a debate or a discussion on, uh, an, on the doctrine of hell, that inevitably... They will use, and here's the key, they will use, even when you're quoting the New Testament, they will always go back to the Old Testament and use the Old Testament as if it's superior to the New Testament and if it's the main way of understanding the New Testament. Right? So I'll, I'll give that again. This is really important. When you're in a debate with an annihilationist, they will bring up loads of scriptures like this that say, that people, the wicked, will die. And if you're listening to that, you're going to be impacting. You think, pow, they've got a powerful case here, right? And what they're doing, which you don't realise, is in the discussion, they will use the Old Testament, these passages like this, they will use that to close any interpretation of the New Testament that might teach the doctrine of hell, to close it down, right? So it's a very important issue, this. The hermeneutical key to understand the doctrine of hell are passages that they take literally from the Old Testament. And they use that to interpret every passage of the New Testament. So no matter what you say, They'll deconstruct it by going back to the Old Testament. So hold, hold your thought there, right? So this is, this is the battleground. This is the battleground. So let's go uh, to Genesis 7.21. This is a typical argument that they would make, right? Genesis 7.21. Right? Let's go to two of their passages. Genesis 7.21. Says and all flesh died, right? Just leave it there. Then go to um, thirty-seven nine, which we looked at there, right? Thirty-seven nine. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So they're cut off. So it's annihilationism. It looks as if bam, done, they're done. Any view of hell is finished. It's very clear we've got the scriptures here. So we looked at these two scriptures, right? Now let, now watch this. Watch this. You bring up a passage in the New Testament, say uh, Matthew 25 about hell, they'll say, well, yeah, but what about this Old Testament passage here? 
let's go to this Old Testament passage, right? Which is uh, 37, 9 and 10. Look, it's very clear. For evildoers shall be cut off. What's cut off? Dead. Annihilated. Alright, now just hold it there. Right? <clears throat> the Old Testament is the first battleground. That, and the interpretation of the Old Testament is the first battleground that you need to win and to show that their interpretation is wrong. That's the first issue. And once you understand this, then you begin to break down the annihilationist and their agenda. Let's look at verse 9 as an example here. For evildoers that shall be cut off, that those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So the annihilation is, is, is interpreting that as right there and then cut off. And then it goes right into the New Testament. They're cut off, they're dead, they're annihilated. Now, have you noticed what they're doing? They're looking at the scripture. Number one, they're looking at it from a linear point of view. In other words, that what is in the Old Testament is exactly the same as in the New Testament. And, and, and here's the key. They're failing to see what is called progressive revelation. That is to say that the Old Testament, all right, is the seed that points to Christ and the New Testament is where Christ comes in all his fullness. In the Old Testament, we get glimpses of the Trinity. In the New Testament, we get full-blown Trinity. In the Old Testament, we have the tabernacle and the types showing us about heavenly things. In the New Testament, we, we're shown more of heavenly things and we have christ rather than the temple do you get what i mean so it's not exactly linear okay it's not exactly linear everything in the old testament is not exactly the same in the new testament there are types there are shadows okay and and so and there's a progression a development of truths that are being expounded in the Old Testament that come to the fullness in the New Testament. And this is very, very key. So whenever you're in a debate with a, an annihilationist, they will always bring you back to this linear interpretation which they have put on, on, the, put on, the, on the scripture as their hermeneutic. Right? But the reality is, so, when the annihilation brings out, you just say, well, how are you understanding the Old Testament? Is it progressive revelation or linear revelation? Is everything in the Old Testament exactly the same as the New Testament? Is everything? And the answer is no. So, it's progressive. So, this is showing us that people are cut off, judged, but what will more revelation come as time comes on what more will be revealed to us all right and and give us a greater understanding of death and judgment and hell so it's not giving you the opportunity to see how progressive revelation in the bible opens up about that doctrine the cutting it off before you even begin does that make sense You know, an example is when um, the Lord, when Moses held up the serpent, the Lord Jesus said, that's a picture of him. An example is when they sacrificed animals, that was a picture of Christ. But when Christ came, he's the fulfillment of the animal sacrifice. The tabernacle, that was a picture of Christ. Christ is here, Christ comes and, and he's the fulfillment of the tabernacle, etc., so it's progressive revelation. It says in the Old Testament that, that the Messiah would come through the line of David. We don't see um, the full Messiah in the line of David until when the Messiah comes, Jesus. So it's progressive revelation. It's very, very important 
to realize that. So that's the first point. So they're interpreting it in a flat way when they're looking at that verse in the Old Testament there and any other Old Testament verses. They're taking it so literal and so flat that they're not allowing for progressive revelation. Then the second thing is they're reading into the text something that is not there. In annihilationism, the people die. Okay. Then they're resurrected. Then they have a judgment. Yeah. They die. They're resurrected. Then there's a judgment. Then they're annihilated. That's four things in that chronology. Can you honestly say that there's that four part chronology in that text? Psalm 37 verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Can you honestly say that it's, say, it's within that verse, it's saying they die, they're resurrected, they are judged, and they are annihilated. Four chronology within that text. Is the chronology there? No. It just says, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So what we conclude here that that text is not final, that that's only a partial understanding of, of what we need to know about the final end of sinners. And that same goes for the Genesis passage. The chronology of the annihilationist is not in the Old Testament text, when you take them literally like they do. And even the passages where they use like uh, Fudge uses Isaiah 66. If you go to Isaiah 66. So we're, we're looking at the issue of the Old Testament. Isaiah 66. At the end it says. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon and another and from another. Right. And they shall. Verse 24. So Isaiah 66 verse 24. And they shall go forth. And look upon the carcass of men, and have transgressed against me. For the worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring, abhor, uh, abhorring unto all flesh. Now the annihilationist, Fudge, would use that proven annihilationism. It's saying, look, the carcasses is dead. But it's only a partial understanding. Because it says there... The worm shall not die, neither shall the fire be quenched. So, if they're annihilated, why are the worms always alive? Why is the fire always going? You see, there's an ambivalence there. It's, it's off, it, 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 there's something here about eternal shame, eternal judgment. And it's not e as easy to say that this passage is about annihilationism. If you look at other passages in Isaiah uh, when the enemy's troops were left on the battlefield and been murdered and they were just left on the battlefield and not buried it was a it was a show of shame. It was to show that the the enemy had been shamed. So here it's talking about eternal shame. It's not necessarily talking about annihilationism. All right. So even passages that they go to to try and prove uh, categorically a kind of chronology within uh, the the system, it, it it can't be found. Right. So we conclude here. Um, what we conclude here uh, in this section is we looked at the Old Testament. We looked at the passages that they bring up, and they say that categorically this means annihilation. What we've seen is they're interpret them, interpreting them flat, in a flat way, not allowing for what is called progressive revelation. The possibility that as the development of the New Old Testament develops and in going into the New Testament, that God would reveal more about the doctrine of hell and it could be more than what the Old Testament is revealing. They're not giving any possibility for that. So they're interpreting every text in a flat way and not allowing the New Testament also to hermeneutic and understand the Old Testament. 
the Old Testament is behind the New Testament and we use the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. But the Old Testament is not superior or over the New Testament. They are both uh, equal in the eyes of God. They are both inspired. They are both authoritative. But the New Testament will be fully will have fully a fuller revelation of the truths that have been revealed in the the, the New Testament will have fuller revelation uh, about many many issues that the Old Testament doesn't tackle and so we have to be careful not to take these Old Testament passages and use them to as a as a as a, a, as a blanket to cover the New Testament and not allow the New Testament to teach us the fullness of that particular doctrine that we need to know about. And, and what happens is we become blinded by the f what the fullness of the New Testament is teaching about hell because we're, we're putting a straitjacket of this Old Testament passages onto the New Testament and not allowing the New Testament to speak for itself on any new teaching concerning hell. The, the Old Testament is there to illustrate things in the New Testament. It's there to back up uh, the New Testament. But it's not there to be an authority over the New Testament. Or the New Testament to be an authority over the Old Testament. But they're to complement each other. But they come in different degrees. The Old Testament is the seed. And the New Testament is the flower. The Old Testament are the types. The New Testament is when it's all the types become a reality. And we have to look at the Old Testament in that way. And secondly, the Old Testament passages, what fudge quotes, do not have this fourfold chronology within them. And then a couple of other caveats concerning the Old Testament. One of the arguments that the, uh, that the annihilationists will use is uh, you know, how can God punish people if they've only if they've sinned seventy years? How can they be punished for billions of years if they've only sinned for seventy years? But they still don't get out of the problem because people who have sinned in the time of Abraham, <coughs> which is thousands and thousands of years ago, are, are, are suffering now. <coughs> so. They've been going for thousands of years, not 70 years. So if they're looking at it from that perspective, their own position is still unjust, if that's the way they want to look at it. But it's not unjust because Christ uh, sees sin as very sinful, and that's the problem, is annihilationists don't see how terrible sin is to God. But the point is that it's not 70 years plus 70 years, people sin for 7 years and then are killed by God. Uh, it, it, people in the time of Abraham still exist today and they're under judgment even today. So that's more than 70 years, that's four or 5,000 years. So they don't get out of this desire for so-called justice of the, of the wicked or, or sinners. So that's just a, a few things on the Old Testament. All right. So I'm going to do this section by section, and you can go through the videos. Um, and I hope that these videos will equip you. I'm going to take my time <coughs> on this because it's such a deep, important topic, <coughs> and it's taken such a stronghold. <coughs> Excuse me. It's taken <coughs> such a stronghold on the church. And I'm going to make a series of videos. And it might be three videos, five videos, but it'll be worth it because it's such an important topic to tackle. So I'm going to make another video now and we'll go on to the next video.